Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. Today we will be discussing the question Cherry Pick Up Part 2. In this question, we are given a rows and column matrix grid representing a field of cherries. In each cell in the grid represents the number of cherries that you can collect. We have two robots that can collect cherries for us and robot 1 is located at the top left corner and robot 2 is located at the top right corner of the grid. We need to return the maximum number of cherries collection using both of the robots by following the rules below. From the cell i, j, a robot can move to cell i plus 1, j minus 1, i plus 1, j, i plus 1, j plus 1. A robot is passing through a cell, it picks up all its cherries and the cell becomes an empty cell. Now, when both the robots stay in the same cell, only one of them takes the cherries. Both the robots cannot move outside of the grid at any moment and both robots should reach the bottom row in the grid. In the first example, as we can see the path taken by the first robot as well as the second robot and the answer comes out to be 24. And on similar lines, the example 2. There is a hint given to the problem which states that we need to use dynamic programming where we will be defining a three-dimensional array in which the maximum cherries that both the robots can take starting on the ith row and column J and K of robot 1 and robot 2 is stored respectively. Now this hint helps us a lot and we will see how we will use this in order to solve this particular problem. Now this is the first example given to us and as the hint states we need to have a DP array of four rows in this case, as it is a three dimensional array, in each row there will be a two dimensional array which will be n cross n, that is the number of columns cross number of columns, wherein the rows will define the robot one column position and the columns will decide the robot two column position. We'll see that in detail right now. Initially, we know that the robot first will be at the position zero and robot 2 will be at the position column minus 1 that is the last column. We need to fill dp0 that is the first row and in that first row the column position for both the robots will be 0, 2 where 0 signifies the column position of robot 1 and 2 signifies the column position of robot 2 in the grid. When we fill the space we get the value 3 plus 1. Now we need to fill the second row. In the second row also there will be a n cross n matrix and we need to see how we can fill the values into this matrix and get the result. If we take the previous position of robot 1 to be 0 then we have 3 column that it can go in the next row that is column number minus 1, column number 0 and column number 1. As column number minus 1 is out of bound we will reject that and we will just keep the 2 values and similar with the robot 2. As the previous position of this robot 2 is 2, we can either reach 1, 2 and 3 column. We will reject the column number 3 as it is out of bound and so we have only 1 and 2. When we create the combination of all the columns that robot 1 can be and also robot 2, we get 4 values and when we fill those 4 values, it will be 0, 0,1, 0, 0,2, 1,1 1, and 1,2. How we will be filling these values and what values will be residing in each each cell. So if we see for 0, 1, the value residing in this cell will be the value at position grid 1, 0 that is the first row, 0th column. Then for the second robot, it will be grid first row, first column and a previous value from where we can reach this particular cell or this particular combination wherein the robot 1 will be at column 0 and robot 1 will be at column 1. The previous in this case becomes the, this value. We were given a case wherein if both the robots are at the same column, we need to just take the number of cherries one time. So in this case, we see that both the robot 1 and robot 2 are at the same column that is 1 comma 1. In this case, we won't be adding the value at the grid two times, but only once we will be adding it. Once this second row is completed, we will move on to the third row. Now, in the case of first row, we only had one value from which we need to start and fill up the matrix for this second row. Now, in the case of the third row, we have four values and we need to fill the matrix with respect to these four values and we need to take every single value and all the cells we can reach from this particular cell. So, if we say it from 0, 1, we will be reaching to these many cells and from 0, 2, we need to fill up the values in these many cells using the same formula that we discussed. 
we will be updating a maximum variable as well which will be holding the maximum value that we have got till this row and this maximum is the answer that we need to return in the end. Now let's see how we will code this and how we can achieve the result. So as we discussed we need to have a, a three dimensional array. So we will create a three dimensional array over here. Now this three dimensional array will be of the size row into column into column. So we will take these values into variables first. We have this DP array with us. Now we will be filling this DP array with minus one as the value. Now we will discuss how, why we are doing this. Now initially we know that the value of the columns uh, will be 0 and column minus 1 because the first robot will be at the position 0 so we will make that as column 1 which will be at 0 and the second ro robot will be at the position of column minus 1 that is the end column. Now we need to fill the value at this particular position that is the 0th row that will be the starting position for us. So we will put the value in the 0th row at column 1 and column 2 and the value will be the grid at 0th column 1 plus column 2. So we have the value for the 0th row from where we will be starting. Now. We discussed that we need to have a maximum value and we will have the maximum value and initially the maximum value will be the column that we started with. Now comes the part wherein we need to iterate over each row. Now for each row starting with 1, now in this each row of DP we need to exercise our logic taking that particular column as the starting position. So we need to loop on all the columns that reside in this row. So there will be n cross n. So we will take these values. Now for every column we need to fill the queue for all the combinations or all the cells we can reach from that queue with respect to robot 1 and robot 2. Now we need to first take the previous value that we discussed. Now the previous value will be previous the value that resides in the previous row at c1 position and c2 position. Now only if this previous is greater than or equals to 0 we need to perform our operations because if it is a negative value that means previously we haven't reached that particular cell and that's why we initialize the whole array with minus 1 because there can be a test case wherein initially both the cells are 0 and in that case we will be stuck in a situation where we cannot start because we think that all the values will be greater than 0 and that's the one point that we can miss. So with respect to interview also always take care of how and what values are by default residing into your array. If it is all positive value, it is a good practice to put a negative value in the whole array so that we are sure that if we have reached a particular cell, its value will be greater than 0 or equals to 0. Now that we have the previous as greater than 0, we need to iterate over all the combination. Now, now we need to iterate over all the combination of the column that C1 and C2 can be in. So we will define a direction array. Now this is not necessary, but uh, it is a good practice to do so. We just need to add this direction array values into the current column values and we'll get the column number. Now for C1 we will have a direction 1 and we'll iterate over it. So the new column will say that column 1 will now become D1 plus C1 and for this all the values 
at direction 2 that is for C2 we'll have column 2 will now be D2 plus C2 now we need to check if the new column 1 and column 2 are in the range of 0 and column and in order to do so we will create a new method which will check if the column 1 and column 2 are in the range so we'll call this method in range where we have column 1 in the column and also for the column 2 if the values are in this range we need to update the column 1 and column 2 position in the ith row so that will be ith row at column 1 and column 2 position we will need to take the maximum that is currently present at that position column 1 and column 2 and the other will be previous plus now if the column 1 and column 2 are already equal then we just need to add the value at ith position and column 1 once otherwise we need to add the value that is present in ith row column 1 and ith row column 2 also we need to update the maximum at each step we will be taking the max of the max value and also this new column that we have filled and as we discussed we need to return max at the end now about this new method that we want to declare we will have a boolean return type the name of it will be in range we need to check the value and the limit now we need to return if the value is equals to 0 or greater than 0 and the value is less than the limit. This completes our code. Let's run it. So it runs successfully. Let's test this for the second input as well. So it runs successfully. Let's test this for all the examples before submitting it. Just to be sure. And the last example. It is giving right result for all the examples. Let's submit this. So it got submitted successfully. The time complexity of this approach is of m into n square, where m is the number of rows and n is the number of columns. The space complexity is also O of m into n square. Thanks for watching the video. See you in the next one.